First of all, consistent with what I had been uh, talking about when all this uh, recovery money uh, was uh, first coming out and uh, we were talking about the different categories, this really is the breakdown and announcement today of those funds uh, that are really non-formula driven in the education, uh, primarily the education arena. Couple of exceptions, but the bulk of it's in the education arena, and the bulk of that's in higher education. Since uh, K through 12 was uh, receiving those funds in the formula-driven arena, if you follow what I'm saying, it's, what 70 some odd percent of the total education stabilization trust fund money went to K through 12 under the formula. So that left uh, a little under uh, 20 percent. Uh, available and you will have or you already have or is being handed out to you a breakdown among the colleges and universities as well as a few other projects uh, particularly the quasi education such as uh, the uh, math and science school which is not quasi education but it's not an institution in and of itself under the formula or uh, deaf and blind school uh, or the rehab you can see those numbers in there as well uh, two really components that we tried to follow along these lines with a third subset, I guess. First, the whole purpose of this is to stimulate the economy through creation, creation of jobs. So one of the things we wanted to do was look for those needed projects that helped create those jobs. Secondly, treat this money as much as possible. There are always potential for exceptions, but treat this as much as possible as capital money, one-time money for capital projects. You know, we've been talking all along that we're fortunate in Arkansas that we had uh, no reduction in uh, funding uh, in K-12 through like a lot of other states did, so we didn't have to use our money to restore cuts because we didn't have any. Uh, secondly, uh, we really didn't have any cuts in higher education. We had a cut of the increase, but we didn't have a cut of the cut. Uh, so that the increase that we've given was cut back some, and, and that's been figured in as well uh, in another pot of money. But uh, so the second thing we wanted to do was to use this money for capital needs and capital projects to reflect that it is the one-time money that, uh, that we all know that it is so that uh, uh, those needs that, that are capital in nature would be met. And then uh, kind of that subset issue is those projects which virtually everybody needs and, and are consistent with some of the public policy, greening and retrofitting and energy savings and roofing and, expansions, all those things that uh, you never have enough money for, you just never have enough money for, but that are worthy projects. So uh, that's really the basis for uh, uh, the handouts that you have that, that reflect all that. We have some representative individuals here. Uh, by no means are they all of them, but we've asked just a few to come uh, to maybe talk about their own specific uh, uh, projects that have been approved that are reflected in your, in your list. Uh, and other than that, we'll try to answer questions. Governor, on, on the, the release that you, know, that you put out, we talked about the additional uh, funding for other projects, talk about funding or potential funding. Is, is some of this money not guaranteed? Well, it's, the money's guaranteed. Some of the projects aren't definite because they're dependent upon other funds. They're dependent upon uh, other people doing their part. Which of those projects? Are well, you, for one of them, you see in there's the uh, math and science school. Uh, we'd set aside, I think, $6 million to help with it. They got a terrible situation with the residential facilities down there. They need a lot of work and they need a lot of help and it's a wonderful school and, and I want to help them. But as the head of that school said, $6 million won't solve our problem. Uh, putting $6 million into their existing problem uh, is probably not a good expenditure of money. So we're trying to work with other partners, particularly the City of Hot Springs to see what else can be done. And so we set that money aside to kind of go with and match uh, the city or the county or uh, University of Arkansas or any of the other potential funding sources down there to try to make a big difference in the residential, particularly residential facilities. That's kind of what you're looking at. Hey, 
Governor Beebe, I've actually been in that school a few years ago, and I know what you're talking about. It was the, the living quarters because the kids actually yeah. lived there. They're yeah. really gifted kids. Um, you know, mold issues and yeah. that kind of a thing. So I read on this press release that says this money will be used for renovation, energy efficient upgrades, and expansion of these buildings. Talk a little bit about what kinds of improvements we can see in just any of these institutions. In any of the institutions? Well, 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 well they in all particular or just any of them? Well, here, let me let me use one as an example, okay. and, and that's a good segue. Bob Brown, uh, are you using any of yours for greening or expansion? Yes, sir. It's all Would you come and talk to Thank you. Well, first of all, let me express gratitude on behalf of Arkansas Tech and all of higher education to Governor Beebe and his staff for working so hard to get these funds uh, to higher educational institutions all over the state. We also express our gratitude to all of those people who work at the federal level, uh, including our representation in Washington for helping to secure this. At Arkansas Tech University, we plan to use these monies to increase the energy efficiency in a particular facility on our campus. It's a facility in which we teach uh, the sciences. Uh, it was built 46 years ago, uh, and we have not had the financial capability to upgrade the HVAC and lighting and other energy usages in that facility for quite some time. And we believe that this is not only an appropriate use of these funds from our perspective, from a higher education perspective, but we also think statewide and nationally this is going to help us to realize a more energy efficient uh, operation and we believe that that's certainly in keeping with the times. So once again, let me express my gratitude to the governor and all his staff uh, for working with us and for having this insight. And governor, thank you again so much, sir. Walter, you might have, uh, you may have the same situation. Let me echo the comments of Dr. Brown and on behalf of the Philander Smith College community, we want to thank the governor and the efforts of the leaders of this state in providing these stimulus dollars for Philander Smith College. We are targeting our dollars completely for uh, energy efficiency. Um, you may remember a few years ago when we started to move into a social justice era on our campus, we were looking at all kinds of justice and you have to deal with environmental justice. And, you don't want to have a campus that really is doing damage to the environment. And so we're going through a process where we are completely retrofitting our entire campus. We're a small campus, so we're able to replace, and we've already started this process, to replace all the lights, to improve HVAC all across the campus. About half of our buildings have been renovated within the last decade, so we're really going to be able to focus on the other half of our buildings to make sure the entire campus is operating efficiently. When we first started and, and did a feasibility study, we were really surprised at how much it costs to actually do this. To actually do the right thing is very expensive. So with these stimulus dollars, this really gives us a jump start in, in completely retrofitting our campus. So once again, we want to thank the governor uh, for including Philander Smith College in this project, and we're just excited about being able to improve the energy efficiency on our campus. I'd like to echo my colleagues' comments. I'm from Mid-South Community College. Uh, the oldest building on our campus actually predates the establishment of the community college. If you can imagine, we still have a chiller unit that uh, is prone to spring leaks and damage the building. Uh, with this money that the governor has helped us get, we're going to be able to replace that with an energy efficient system that's going to save taxpayer dollars, as well as no more damage to the building, so we really appreciate it. I too want to thank uh, Governor Beebe and, and his staff, the uh, Arkansas Congressional Delegation, and uh, President Obama and his staff for this stimulus package. Uh, I'm Skip Rutherford. I'm the Dean of the Clinton School of Public Service, and we uh, hold classes in what was the uh, 1899 Choctaw train station, uh, which has been renovated um, and houses the uh, offices, the administrative offices of the Clinton School. The money uh, that we will be receiving will be used to make that building qualify for LEED certification for operation and maintenance. Balancing the uh, needs of the National Register of Historic Preservation uh, and the need for reducing the carbon footprint, uh, this uh, LEED certification uh, is a major step and when it is completed, the Clinton School 
will be the oldest college building in the world uh, to be lead, lead certified for operations and maintenance. So it's not only a, uh, a much needed uh, project in terms of reducing the carbon footprint and energy efficiency, but it is a real tribute to Governor Beebe and, and his uh, team uh, for their commitment uh, to, uh, to support the oldest college building in the world uh, to have this. It joins Heifer International and the Clinton Presidential Library as part of the campus uh, where uh, green is important. So again, thank you very much. So I think these are examples, but, uh, uh, and each institution had to submit a detailed uh, list of priorities, and I'm sure you can get those uh, from somebody. Uh, I've seen them and, and had them all explained to me and actually read most of them. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, there's a lot of detail as to how they intend to use the money. but. Remember two things that are kind of overriding on this. Creating jobs. That is, we got heating companies, air conditioning companies, roofing companies, brick companies. Uh, and in some cases, it's not just greening. In some cases, it's expansion of, uh, and building new facilities or, or buildings that, that they need. Uh, so uh, it's construction. It's all of these things that either create jobs or, or those existing jobs uh, that might have otherwise not had work to do providing that work. And then secondly, this is a taxpayer's money, people. This, belongs, this money belongs to American taxpayers. And they ought to get something for it. If they're having to spend it, they ought to get something for it, not, not be wasted. So it ought to be spent on something that will help those taxpayers, whether it's their children that are students at these colleges or whether they're saving uh, uh, energy costs, electric bills uh, that they're having to pay out of their state tax dollars to run uh, colleges and universities or any of these other facilities that, that are being addressed. So, Creating jobs and giving the taxpayers something for their money is uh, is kind of what what my top priority is. Thank you.